Hello and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our daily current affairs videos for RBI Grade B. You all know that we have our crash course going on. All right, so you are preparing for a very important competitive exam of RBI Grade B. All right, and that does not mean that you are competing others, but that also means that you are also competing yourself. Right? You are scoring better in your mocks day by day. You are. you know practicing upon your strengths then you are also improving your weaknesses right you are trying to minimize your weakness but you know the time is really short now right now is not the right time to work on your weaknesses but you have to solve mocks and spend quality time in analysis all right so just in case you think that you are falling somewhere behind in your preparation or for some reason you feel under confident about your preparation and you know you need that extra push you need some guidance you need some you know more comprehensive guidance uh, as per your strength and weaknesses we all provide a personalized guidance under this RBI grade B crash course program All right, so you can have a look at this crash course program on our website. You can check about the details of this app uh, of this program in our Telegram channel. All right, so just in case you think that you need that extra push, do check out this crash course. All right, and for today's PDF, for today's daily current affairs PDF, you can just download the PDF in our Telegram channel. The link for our Telegram channel is given down in the description below. All right so moving on to the very first question of today we have Tata Steel Foundation has set up its industrial training institute at which in which state All right so Tata Steel Foundation as we all know is a corporate social responsibility hub right a corporate social responsibility uh, of Tata Steel All right, Tata Steel का एक CSR एस आर इनिशिएटिव है जो कि एक एन जी ओ की तरह काम करता है इट इज़ एन इंडियन एन जी ओ राइट एंड इट्स चीफ इज मिस्टर सौरव राय ओके सो बेसिकली इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एज बिंग सेटअप इन चैंडल सो यू इफ यू ऑल नो वेर दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ चैंडल इज यू कैन यू विल बी ईजिली बी एबल टू यू नो आंसर द क्वेश्चन All right, but then also, you know, Tata Steel. Subs. If you know a little background, I think that you should know about Tesco plant, right? And Tata Group. You will also be able to answer this question in the very state Jharkhand. In the very state of Jharkhand, जहाँ पे सबसे पहला इंडिया का आयरन एंड स्टील प्लांट सेटअप हुआ था in the year nineteen zero seven by the father of Indian industry. फादर ऑफ इंडियन इंडस्ट्री बी जमशेद जी टाटा जमशेद जी नावरो जी टाटा यू ऑल शुड यू ऑल शुड टेक आउट सम टाइम एंड रीड अबाउट हिम गेन सम इंस्पिरेशन ग्रो इन योर लाइफ एंड एड ऑन टू योर नॉलेज और राइट इट यू विल स्पेंड योर टाइम इन अ मोर कंस्ट्रक्टिव वे एंड यू विल अपियर एज अ मोर नॉलेजेबल इंडिविजुअल इन द इंटरव्यू एज वेल और राइट so jharkhand is the state where uh, chandel uh, indian institute indian train industrial training institute is being set up by uh, tata steel foundation all right so industrial training institute basically it aims at what it is aimed at giving industrial training to tribal youth of jharkhand और राइट तो झारखंड के जितने भी ट्राइबल बेल्ट में जितने यूथ हैं उनको इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग देने का ऑब्जेक्टिव से ये चांदल में प्लांट इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट सेटअप किया गया है एंड आल्सो इन झारखंड देर आर ऑलरेडी टू इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट्स राइट वन इज आई टी राइट एंड अनदर वन इज आई टी right these are the two places in jharkhand where iti have already been established by tata steel foundation all right so it tribal youth ko target karta hai to provide them employable skills right industry ready skills so that they can get employment and iti claims to have 100% employment placed in you know major uh, industries like hindalco motors suzuki motors hindalco 
जैसी इंडस्ट्रीज में हंड्रेड परसेंट प्लेसमेंट हुआ है एंड इवन अ फ्यू स्टूडेंट्स हैव आल्सो बीन प्लेस्ड इन हांगकांग सो जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्राइवेट इनिशिएटिव्स गवर्नमेंट तो इनिशिएटिव ले ही रहा है बट आल्सो प्राइवेट इंस्टीट्यूट्स एंड स्पेशली मेजर इंडस्ट्रीज लाइक टाटा एंड रिलायंस देयर सी एस आर एक्टिविटी एंड दिस एक्टिविटी इज बेसिकली फोकस्ड इन एल डब्ल्यू ई अफेक्टेड एरिया राइट अगर ये ओडिशा एंड झारखंड जैसे एरिया में ऐसे आई टी आई इंस्टीट्यूट्स खोल रहा है एंड इफ इट इज़ टारगेटिंग द ट्राइबल यूथ द ट्राइबल यूथ द सेम ट्राइबल यूथ हु कैन ईजिली बी रेडिकलाइज इन द नक्सल मूवमेंट राइट दिस इज बेसिकली द लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म एफेक्टेड एरिया इट इज़ अ पार्ट ऑफ इट और राइट सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी हेल्पफुल इनिशिएटिव इन यूजिंग द स्किल्स एंड एनर्जी ऑफ आर यूथ प्रोवाइडिंग दैम विद एम्प्लॉयमेंट राइट सो उड़ीसा एंड झारखंड आर बेसिकली टू मेन स्टेट्स वेर आर आई टी आई एम्स टू गेट दीज ट्राइबल यूथ एम्प्लॉयड इन सम इंडस्ट्रियल एरियाज और राइट सो सी एम ऑफ झारखंड हेमंत सोरेन राइट सी एम ऑफ झारखंड हेमंत सोरेन वी ऑल नो All right, and its chief is Mr. Saurav Roy, right? Saurav Roy. All right. So Tata Steel के CEO का नाम क्या है? Just type it down in the comments below right now. अभी आप लिख के बताइए who is the CEO of Tata Steel? T V Narendra Nath. T V Narendra Nathan is the CEO of Tata Steel. Tata Steel was formerly known as Tisco. ठीक है एंड नटराजन चंद्रशेखर इज द चेयरमैन ऑफ टाटा और राइट सो आई होप इट वॉज क्लियर मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी हैव विच स्टेट इज रनिंग मिशन स्कूल ऑफ एक्सलेंस प्रोजेक्ट दैट हैज रिसेंटली रिसीव सेवेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड करोर फ्रॉम वर्ल्ड बैंक एंड एशिया इंफ्रा इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंक और राइट कौन से स्टेट में वर्ल्ड बैंक के डेलीगेट्स रिसेंटली विजिटेड टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ द स्टेट्स और राइट यू हैव टू नेम द स्टेट विच स्टेट हैव रिसीव्ड दिस अमाउंट सेवेंटी फाइव हंड्रेड करोर फ्रॉम वर्ल्ड बैंक एंड एशिया इंफ्रा इंस्ट्रक्चर एशिया इंफ्रा इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंक और राइट सो महसाना एंड महसाना एंड सबर कांथा सबर कांथा एंड मेहसाना दीज आर द टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट इन गुजरात द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज गुजरात जहाँ पे वर्ल्ड बैंक के डेलीकेट्स दे विजिटेड दीज टू डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड दे इंट्रोड्यूस्ड मिशन स्कूल ऑफ एक्सलेंस प्रोजेक्ट और राइट सो मिशन स्कूल ऑफ एक्सलेंस प्रोजेक्ट बेसिकली एम्स एट इम्प्रूविंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ एजुकेशन इन द स्टेट और राइट द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विल स्पेंड रुपीज टेन थाउजेंड करोर इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स और राइट और इन फाइव इयर्स में क्या क्या टेन लाख स्मार्ट क्लासरूम्स और राइट जस्ट नोट दीज थिंग्स डाउन टेन लाख स्मार्ट क्लासरूम्स विल बी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड और राइट टू लाख कंप्यूटर लैब्स अटल टिंकरिंग लैब्स विल बी सेट अप राइट टू लाख कंप्यूटर लैब्स कंप्यूटर accessibility there is still a huge amount of digital divide when it comes to urban students and rural students all right so if there will be a computer system a personal pc on every desk that is the main uh, you know thing and atal tinkering lab jaise initiative ko promote karna hai if we want to inculcate the culture of innovation among the indian youth then you know this is very very helpful like अटल टिंकरिंग लैब्स भी फाइव थाउजेंड अटल टिंकरिंग लैब्स विल बी सेट अप राइट एंड इवन स्मॉल गवर्नमेंट स्कूल्स जो होते हैं जो प्राइवेट ग्रांट एंड एड वाले स्कूल्स होते हैं जिनमें यू नो ग्रांट एंड एड स्कूल्स बेसिकली एम टू प्रोवाइड एजुकेशन टू स्टूडेंट्स हु आर नॉट एबल टू अफोर्ड इवन गवर्नमेंट स्कूलिंग राइट सो दीज आर दीज ग्रांट एंड एड स्कूल्स दीज विल ऑल्सो बी बेनिफिटेड अंडर द स्कीम और राइट so this is the main aim right the scheme is actually it aims to benefit around 1 crore students in the next 5 years right so this is very very important that at least 1 crore students are due to be benefited by the scheme in next 5 years theek hai na so moving on to the next slide we have world bank World Bank delegates and Asia Infra Investment Bank. These are the two major investors in uh, Mission School. 
right mission school of excellence so world bank you all should know that world bank is collectively known as the world bank group all right world bank group isko kaha jata hai and iske headquarters are in washington dc right washington dc its parent organization is united nations all right the parent organization of world bank is united nations this this world bank group is actually a group of five important development institutions ibrd institute in international bank for reconstruction and development ibrd basically genesis hai world bank ka जो वर्ल्ड वॉर टू से अफेक्टेड कंट्रीज थी उनके रिकंस्ट्रक्शन और डेवलपमेंट के लिए बेसिक एम आईबीआरडी सेटअप इसलिए किया गया था राइट आईबीआरडी एंड देन यू हैव इंटरनेशनल डेवलपमेंट एसोसिएशन और राइट यू हैव इंटरनेशनल फाइनेंस कॉरपोरेशन राइट मल्टीलैटरल गारंटी एजेंसी राइट and very very important institute another very important institute by world bank we have uh, international center for settlement of disputes right settlement of investment disputes so basically jitne bhi investment disputes hote hain kisi bhi country mein for example there is an investment dispute in india then that dispute will be taken forward to the world bank all right the settlement jo hota hai disputes ka that is how it works all right so you should know that world bank is basically a consortium of five development important development institutions all right and the president of world bank is mr david malpass david malpass is the president of world bank right and very very important news item miss anusha kant miss anusha kant she is the chief finance officer cfo plus managing a director of the world bank right she belongs to rurki india okay so this is very important okay so asia invest infra investment bank ke headquarters kahan pe hai the this bank is headquartered in beijing right it was formed in the year 2015 it came into operation in the year 2016 all right abhi initially the members were less but now it is a bank of 97 member countries right and of these 97 97 members 14 countries belong to g20 all right 14 countries belong to g20 including france italy germany right united kingdom right of course india is also a member right and the president of asia investment infra investment bank is jin liquid okay so i hope this was clear all right so moving on to the next question we have which depart where has the department of animal husbandry and dairying launched one health framework in partnership with mill and belinda gates foundation all right so kaun se state mein one health framework launch kiya gaya hai one health if you have been following the new news you should know what is one health framework all right one health framework we will discuss about it first answer the question the correct answer here is uttarakhand right dahd which is a important uh, department of ministry of fisheries ministry of fisheries and animal husbandry right uh, the union minister of uh, purushottam purushottam rupala mr purushottam rupala is the union minister of fisheries minister of fisheries and animal husbandry and dairy right and who is the chief minister of jharkhand the incumbent chief minister of jharkhand mr pushkar singh dhami All right so let's discuss what the one health uh, basically is all about one health uh, ye initiative liya gaya hai kiske under it is an mou signed with bill and melinda gates foundation right you all know who are, who are bill and melinda gates the bill and melinda gates foundation works in india right it uh, you know invests and works in a lot of uh, social sectors right corporate social responsibility bahut bada organization hai that 
is doing a lot of other works in india all right we will discuss at length about it some day but first let's just focus on one health one health kya hai basically a human animal and wildlife ka jo contact hota hai the interface between human and animal human health animal health and ecosystem health right over the years we have realized that none of these three factors are independent ऑफ कोर्स दीज आर इंडिपेंडेंट और जितनी भी जुअनोटिक डिजीजेज होती हैं राइट जैसे अभी रिसेंटली सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट जुअनोटिक डिजीज कोविड नाइनटीन राइट कोविड नाइनटीन आउटब्रेक इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जुअनोटिक डिजीज दैट हैज इफेक्टेड कॉज्ड अ ह्यूज लॉस ऑफ लाइफ राइट दैट हैज बीन अ मेजर सेटबैक टू ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द इकोनॉमीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड राइट अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट जुअनोटिक डिजीज जिनका थैंकफुली दे डिड नॉट बिकेम अ पैंडमिक राइट वेरी डेंजरस डिजीज एबोला राइट देन यू ऑल्सो हैव नीपा वायरस राइट सार्स मर्स दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल ऑफ जुअनोटिक डिजीज ओनली राइट मर्स विड बी मिडल ईस्ट रेस्पिरेटरी सिंड्रोम राइट दिट इट बिगैन मिडल ईस्ट राइट the disease originated from camel right so each of these diseases that are troubling humans today right that have become epidemic in some regions some have grown to become global pandemics right it is very very important to monitor zoonotic health right it is so important right even if when someone is working in a uh, with cows राइट विद बफलोस राइट डेयरी इंडस्ट्री में कोई भी अगर फार्मर काम करता है देन ही और शी ऑल्सो हैव द रिस्क टू गेट इन्फेक्टेड विद ट्यूबोकलॉसिस राइट देर आर अ रेंज ऑफ जोनोटिक डिजीज दैट आर इन दैट एग्जिस्ट इन दीज एनिमल्स एंड देर कलेक्शन देर असेसमेंट देर एनालिसिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो बेसिकली वन हेल्थ इनिशिएटिव इसी के डेटा को कलेक्ट करने के लिए बना गया है डेटा कलेक्शन ऑन डिजीज आउटब्रेक्स राइट मैनेजमेंट प्रिवलेंस एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सर्वेलेंस प्लान राइट लैब नेटवर्क इंटीग्रेशन डेवलपमेंट एंड इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन स्ट्रैटेजीज कैसे कम्युनिकेशन स्ट्रैटेजीज को कैसे इम्प्लीमेंट किया जाए राइट बेसिकली वन हेल्थ नेटवर्क इसी के ऑब्जेक्टिव से काम करेगा राइट फॉर बेटर असेसमेंट ऑफ द रिलेशन बिटवीन जोनोटिक एंड एंड ह्यूमन डिजीजेस ऑल राइट एंड दिस विल इंटीग्रेट ऑल ऑफ द डेटा विद नेशनल डिजिटल लाइफ स्टॉक मिशन डिजिटल आर्किटेक्चर राइट डिजिटल लाइफ स्टॉक का डिजिटल आर्किटेक्चर में ये इन डिजीजेस को भी कॉन्ट मतलब डेटा उसका ऐड करेगा और राइट सो बेसिकली इसका एंड गोल क्या है टू इम्प्रूव ह्यूमन हेल्थ लाइफ स्टॉक हेल्थ एनवायरमेंट एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ हेल्थ और राइट थ्रू द यूज ऑफ फाइनेंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी राइट इट विल कम अंडर द चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ प्रिंसिपल साइंटिफिक एडवाइजर टू द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया और राइट सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द बॉटम लाइन द ब्रॉडर ऑब्जेक्टिव राइट लाइफ स्टॉक एंड ह्यूमन बेसिक इसका लाइफ स्टॉक एंड ह्यूमन हेल्थ का जो इंटरेक्शन है लाइफ हाउ डज द हाउ डू दीज डिजीज प्रोपोगेट ऑल द डेटा विल बी कलेक्टेड एंड असेंबल्ड एंड एडेड टू द नेशनल डिजिटल लाइफ स्टॉक मिशन डिजिटल आर्किटेक्चर और राइट सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वन हेल्थ और राइट so let's move on to the next question very 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 important question and a very good question right the export of marine products in 2021 22 in terms of value all right so first answer the question correctly right pehle aap is question ko correctly answer kar dijiye then we will move on to how and why is this very the most important question for today all right so the correct answer is 7.71 million dollars right 7.71 billion dollars is the highest ever recorded highest ever recorded marine product export from india all right but ye sirf itna hi nahi hai india overall agriculture exports have crossed a historic of 50 billion dollar mark in financial year 2022 
the most challenging year for india when uh, it faced uh, you know logistics challenges right challenges in logistics infrastructure unavailability of ferries right there is covid 19 pandemic affecting other countries right there is russia ukraine crisis grow- going on so you know in midst in the midst of these challenges right these uh, global issues india has grown to be the most reliable food supplier and exporter to the world all right in comparison to 2021 exports were only this much 41.87 billion dollars but in this year 2021 22 exports grew 19.92 percent to 50.21 billion dollars all right so ye important cheeze hai right wheat have a look at wheat have a look at this number 2.91 billion dollars in 2021 22 which is a 273% jump from financial year 2021 right financial year 2021 mein the wheat exports were just 568 million dollars right these were just 568 million dollars and now these have grown to become 2112119 million dollars All right, so this is a fantastic jump when it comes to wheat, right? बहुत सारे initiatives लिए हैं government of India ने, right? For example, export promotion organisations, right? Farmer producer organisations, जितने भी commodities board हैं, for example, sugar cane board of India, the wheat board of India. All right, these all connected with the farmers. The state government, the central government, both ensured, both ensured that farmers are getting uh, these the benefits of this export jump. All right, Ministry of Commerce also, you know. Interacted right, Ministry of Commerce का बहुत ही important uh, organization है, A P E D A. right agri uh, agriculture produce export and development agency all right this comes under the ambit of ministry of commerce and it is a very important institute when it comes to ensuring fair remuneration to farmers when it comes to an export led growth all right so farmer connect portal set up kiya gaya right so that the farmers can you know ha get connected with prospective buyers right they can export directly and receive the income right aur bhi bahut sare you know districts se logistics infrastructure ko connect kiya gaya for example from uh, districts like varanasi and lucknow mangoes will be exported right from nagpur oranges they will be exported right so not only domestic market but export market was given special attention this year all right because the broader aim is what comparative advantage india is an agrarian economy right so its ka broader objective kya hai to leverage the comparative uh, uh, advantage of uh, the agricultural produce in india right regional resource based, uh, based development uh, ko initiate kiya gaya hai all right and export led growth and export led growth will surely help india achieve to become a 5 trillion dollar economy right so this is very very important right uh, happy banana train just uh, do google search about happy banana train right ye main aapko isliye bata rahi hu kyunki aise chote mote initiatives kabhi kuch isse related questions mein ya exam mein aa sakta hai डेफिनेटली आ सकता है दिस इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इससे रिलेटेड जितने भी इंपॉर्टेंट इनिशिएटिव्स हैं बीट हैप्पी बनाना ट्रेन बीट फ्रूट ट्रेन राइट बीट फार्मो कनेक्ट पोर्टल डू लर्न मोर अबाउट दीज टॉपिक्स राइट एनी थिंग कैन बी आस्ड इन द एग्जामिनेशन इट इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज आइटम और राइट सो just imagine guys 1947 at the time of independence india was a food importer then green revolution hua to we became self sufficient in food right and now we have become a major a reliable exporter of food products right even processed food industries to the entire world entire world is counting and relying on the most resilient indian economy that it is today
All right. So let's talk about Khanjar 2022. It is a joint military exercises. If you remember that in the pre one of the previous daily current affairs videos and in the PPT, I have shared a link with you. It was a link by PIB, right? And that link contained the names of all the important joint military exercises that India conducts with various countries, uh, be it army, be it नेवल एक्सरसाइजेज और बी एट एंड एयरफोर्स एक्सरसाइज राइट उन्हीं में से एक एक्सरसाइज है खंजर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू राइट विद विच कंट्री इज दिस जॉइंट मिलिट्री एक्सरसाइज कंडक्टेड राइट खंजर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इज अ जॉइंट मिलिट्री एक्सरसाइज इज विद किर्गिस्तान राइट किर्गिस्तान का कैपिटल बिश्केक राइट द एक्सरसाइज इज बींग कंडक्टेड इन बकलो That is in Himachal Pradesh. <coughs> Sorry, Himachal Pradesh. Me, India and Kyrgyzstan. Ke beech me, ninth edition of the joint military exercises will be conducted. Right, special forces training school here in Baklo, Himachal Pradesh, where the exercise will be conducted. Right, and it will also strengthen the relations and ties between India and Kyrgyzstan and their mutual respect. mutual respect for sovereignty democracy and of course combating terrorism fighting and combating terrorism right kyrgyzstan bahut important country hai for india because it is a central asian country not only it it is a very important route to connect with uh european countries right the terrain of kyrgyzstan will also provide uh, a very good practice to the armed forces of indian army whenever joint military exercises is conducted in kyrgyzstan but for now in 2022 the joint military exercises is being held in baklo in himachal pradesh all right president of kyrgyzstan sadir japarov Sadr Japarov is the president of Kyrgyzstan and the currency of Kyrgyzstan is Kyrgyz som right so i hope it was clear till now moving on to the next very important question global wind report global wind report global wind energy council global wind energy council ne uh, publish kiya hai the global wind energy council came into being uh, was established in the year 2005 a very important international organization that concerns itself with the generation of wind power as an important source of renewable energy in the world all right so total wind power capacity kitni hai in 2021 as per the report the total wind power capacity in 2021 was right Uh, just mark the correct answer right so that we can move on to the next question the total wind power capacity is 837 gigawatt this is the correct answer the total wind power capacity is 837 gigawatt b all right so this report was as per the report it is the global wind energy second best year in 2021 right 94 gigawatt of uh, capacity was added globally representing a growth rate of 1.8% right 1.8% ka growth rate has been added with 94 gigawatt of capacity added globally all right onshore wind and offshore wind do tarike ki wind energies hoti hain onshore means on the land and offshore means on any water body sea water or fresh water all right onshore mein bhi do tarike ki wind energy hoti hai ek fixed hoti hai aur ek floating hoti hai right floating uh, windmills are almost negligible in existence right jitne bhi offshore usually exist karte hain most of them are fixed their their foundation is actually fixed at the base of shallow water right shallow water area mein fixed windmills ko install kiya jata hai floating uh, windmills are installed in deep sea waters all right where the foundation is anchored on the seabed right to basically offshore uh, windmills ka ek advantage ho jata hai that land dispute related uh, jitne bhi uh, problems hote hain that is not being faced over here all right but let's not uh, 
digress from the objective of the question right onshore wind power capacity has uh, declined by 18 percent right because two of the largest wind power markets that is china and us have been slow to add on to the wind power capacity onshore wind power capacity all right so 21.1 giga gigawatt of offshore wind power capacity was commissioned in 2021 which is three times more than 2020 all right and offshore wind capacity in china is being added 80 percent of offshore wind capacity of the world is added by china right offshore means over the over any water body all right so we have covered all this it is also very important to know that five nations five important nations germany us denmark spain and india of course we have already discussed china right these are the most important nation that contribute to 80 percent of the installed wind energy capacity all right or india may subse uh achi wind energy capacity subse zada wind energy capacity ka scope lies with the state of andhra pradesh right the state of gujarat right the state of karnataka mp tamil nadu right these are the few important states that have immense potential to contribute to wind energy uh, wind energy in india and ministry of uh, new and renewable energy ne bhi uh, ek goal set up kiya hai to add 5 gigawatts of offshore wind capacity right and 30 gigawatts of onshore wind capacity by the year 2030 all right so this was all to know about this slide okay or also very important that india is the fourth largest provider of onshore wind capacity in the world all right so our target is to add on to the 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022 apart from solar energy right apart from other sources of renewable energy wind capacity should definitely be tapped into right the potential of wind capacity is immense when it comes to contribution to non-renewable sources of energy sorry the renewable sources of energy okay how much stake has the Union Bank of India sold in India SME Asset Reconstruction Company to Dham, Dhan Samriddhi Finance? All right. So, India SME Asset Reconstruction Company is basically uh, an asset reconstruction company for MSMEs, as the name suggests. MSMEs ke jitne bhi default ya for non performing assets hai, unke reconstruction ke liye India will be responsible, right? And recently, Union Bank of India has sold 8% of its uh, stake in ISARC, ISARC to Dhan Samriddhi Finance. All right. So uh, when we talk about asset reconstruction companies, so asset reconstruction companies basically. Uh, these were first commissioned under the Surfacy Act I hope aap sab ne is act ke baare mein padha hoga because you are reading about finance you are reading about management in your course for phase 2 right Tanvi ma'am must have made, made a video on Surfacy Act and asset reconstruction companies were first established under the ambit of this act and all the asset reconstruction companies in India are basically registered with the RBI all right so Union Bank of India ne 8% stake sale kari hai to Dhan Samitri Finance and ISARC. All right, ISARC ke bhati important supporter banks are PNB, Bank of Baroda, SIDBI, and SIDBI Venture. All right. So, moving on to the next question, we have which scheduled commercial bank has witnessed the highest number of frauds in value terms? Right? Value terms means the amount, right? Pertains to the amount. The highest number of frauds as per the number of cases. Sabse zada mein aapko bata deti it is Bank of India, right, Bank of India, 13 cases in 9 months, right, 
बट दिस इज नॉट द हाइएस्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ वैल्यू सबसे ज्यादा फ्रॉड विटनेस किए हैं पंजाब नेशनल बैंक ने राइट राइट पंजाब नेशनल बैंक अकाउंटेड फॉर रुपीज फोर थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी क्रोर्स ऑफ फ्रॉडिलेंट केसेस इन नाइन मंथस राइट टेन केसेस बट इन द सेम स्पैन ऑफ टाइम राइट so rbi according to a report according to the report from rbi at least rupees 100 crore right 100 crore are lost every day to bank fraud for the last 7 years right unbelievable sounds unbelievable but it is true that rupees 100 crore is lost to fraud every day every day for the last 7 years all right so this is very very important banking fraud worth rupees 2.5 lakh crore were uh, sabse zyada banking fraud kaun se state mein uh, you know paye gaye sabse zyada in maharashtra then in gujarat right then in tamil nadu okay so this is very very important this is a very grave situation all right because this is lost of our financial asset right rbi ki credibility pe question uth sakta if the amount increases more right nirav modi case you all know about punjab national banks nirav modi case right so all this thing must be controlled measures must be taken to contain bank frauds right fugitive economic offenders will be uh, you know legislate kiya gaya tha by the government of india to deal with the crisis all right we shall go into the details some day all right who is the managing director and ceo of dcb bank dcb bank ke managing director and ceo abhi kon appoint hue hain ya fir koi agar reappoint hua hai right md and ceo of punjab national bank mr atul kumar goyal Mr Atul Kumar Goyal is the MD and CEO of Punjab National Bank DCB Bank aap sab ne answer dekh hi liya hoga Mr Murli M Natarajan has been reappointed has been reappointed as the MD and CEO of DCE Bank which is an important private sector bank in India right he has been reappointed to the tenure of 2024 right 2022 se 2024 right ye reappointment क्यों इम्पॉर्टेंट है ये न्यूज वाई बिकॉज टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर ही विल कम्प्लीट हिस्स एन एम डी एंड सीईओ ऑफ डी सी बी बैंक राइट एंड एज पर आर बी आई रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन किसी भी बैंक किसी भी बैंक का एम डी या सीईओ राइट ही और शी कैन नॉट एक्सीड द टेन्योर ऑफ फिफ्टीन ईयर्स right so even if uh, a person is appointed or reappointed it is done with the consent of all the shareholders of the respective bank all right annual general meeting hoti hai the shareholders vote upon it and then you know how the process works if you don't then you should all right moving on to the very last question for today a very interesting question asian junior u20 men and women and kaded u17 under 20 men and women and kaded under 17 boys and girls ki fencing championship where will india host this fencing championship all right answer the question correctly the fencing championship will be held in the state in the city of ahmedabad all right it will be held in the city of ahmedabad in the year 2030 2023 right by the fencing association of india right who is she he, she is the first fencing champion of india right who was nominated who was um, for the uh, 2020 summer olympics right she qualified for the 2020 summer olympics right miss c a bhavni devi right this is very important sports personality you should read more about her she belongs to the city of chennai hailing from tamil nadu right and fencing association of india is an approved body by the national uh, by the indian olympics association all right so and it is currently it is presided by mr pankaj singh okay 
so this was it for today i hope the questions were very very clear for to you and uh, you are left with no doubt right thank you so much for watching the video in case you have any doubt write it down in the comments below right see you in the next class keep studying stay happy focus focus on your growth study well take care and bye bye